The challenge of teaching global citizenship is to make complex issues and stories from faraway countries feel relevant to students in the UK. Child labour affects more than a quarter of a billion children worldwide, depriving them of the things children here take for granted. But banning child labour is not necessarily the answer, as millions of families depend on it to survive. At John Cabot City Technology College in Bristol, ITC teacher Frank Ward is exploring the issue over two lessons. Do you want the picture first and then have that? He's teaching child labour for the first time, focusing on India, with the highest number of child workers in the world. He wants to engage his Year 8 class by asking them to compare their lives with children in India. Who's got a part-time job? Well, I do a paper on every... Wednesday and Thursday. OK. Do you have to go out in any weather? Any, yeah, any weather. But if it's raining, my mum drops me off at the places. I have to clean my bedroom. Is it tough cleaning your bedroom? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> I've got to clean my room and clean my hamster and make my bed and pol polish my bedroom. OK, good. Going to look today um, at a child who lives in India. Can somebody just imagine, just for a moment, what do you think that their everyday uh, life might be? What might be something that they do every day? They might, like, cut crops and, like, get rice and stuff. OK, good. Uh, what, what else? Taylor? They might fetch water and, like, clean up their house and cast their little bird, but they don't get anything for it. They just do it as in Sarah. OK. Right, good, yeah. Um, their jobs would be really hard because in some parts of India it's really poor. Right. Good. Um, they'll probably have to get out like really, really early to like get like water and food. Okay, some really good ideas come from everybody here. They might have to like work in a factory to like help out at home and stuff. Good. And these would be people your age, do you think? Yeah. When they might have time off, how do you think they might play? What What do you think they might play? Uh, and and just enjoy themselves. Yeah. Just play outside, like with anything, like a bottle or some spare sort of hard thing, so they play football or something. So they're going to play outside, yeah? Yeah, so they like, can like, make something out of scraps or something. OK. It. I want to give you each something. Uh, these are bangles. Frank's brought in glass bangles made in India and wants the class to think about how they're made and who might make them. So feel free, put them on your wrist. I can't get them. Feel it. See what it's made of. What is it? <laughs> He's showing them a short film about a boy who makes bangles like these. He's the same age as the students in Frank's class. This is about a story of a boy in India called Anil. My name is Anu. I'm 13 years old. I wake up at 5 every day. I get washed and dressed and then I start work. I work at home. I do the joining work on glass bangles. When the bangles come from the factory to our house, the bangle isn't joined. It's not a full circle, so I have to hold it in the flame to stick the ends together. Women wear these bangles. When we finish it, they go back to the factory for decoration. Then they go to the shops and markets, and then women buy them. This is a bundle. I make about 15 bundles a day. Mm. 
There are a lot of problems in my house. Only three of us are working. My father got very ill and we had to spend all the money we got on medicine. Now he's not here anymore. So things are very difficult. We used to have a house. Then my father broke his leg and we didn't have any money, so we had to sell our house. Then he got very ill with cancer. And then he died. Before my husband got ill, all the children went to school and were able to play. But after he got ill, the older ones had to start working. School costs about 80p per month in fees for each child. And then we have to pay for pens and notebooks and textbooks on top of that. So we just can't earn enough to send all the children to school. There are seven people in my family. There's my mother, my sister and my four brothers. I fight with them a lot. They're mischievous. When I first started this work, I burnt my whole hand, not just my fingers, but slowly I've got used to the work. I still burn my fingers, but because I've burnt them so much, the skin's got tough. So now it doesn't hurt as much. <coughs> when I burn my fingers, I feel like I just want to stop working. But because I have to work, I keep going. If I don't work, we can't afford to eat. When the fumes get into my eyes. My eyes start to burn and I can't see properly. I get a lot of diseases. I've had a fever for the past few days. I wish I could go to school. Then I'd have friends and be able to play with the other children. What is there in this work? At the end of the day, I earn 4p per bundle, so I only earn around 40p a day. But if I could go to school, I could learn and get a proper job and earn more. I imagine England to be full of big houses and good streets with lots of children and good playgrounds for children. Their lives must be very different to mine. They must wear good clothes there. I don't wear good clothes. They must be playing in clean playgrounds. I'm just running around here playing in the mud. Yeah, I can
In the evenings, I do some more work and then we go to bed. All my family sleep together in this room. We sleep here on the earth. What I want to do now is just get your initial reactions. What, what were you thinking of what was going, going th through your mind? It was quite different for them because they, they, like, they were saying about like 80p to them was a lot of money and they said about some of them couldn't really go to school. Yeah. I couldn't believe the fact that they were slept in the same room, really like tightly packed together. So it was in this, it was, Yeah, not yeah. so much that they were in the same room, but they were really close to each other. Yes. It must be like really hard though to like live so close to each other because if they they're dependent on the people that are working, if like one of them like like goes to school brings home like something like an illness, and the people that like working have to like stop working, they all like in the way they all like lose from it because otherwise they're not getting any money so they can't go to school either. Right. It yeah, made me feel sad about what we've got and we just, some people take it for granted, and then what they've got is hardly anything. Let's just actually make Next, a mind Frank map asked the class to create a mind map from their experience of watching the film. What did working so young mean for that boy? Because he was like working so much, like all the fumes were giving him, like, making him ill and things like that. Like he kept getting burnt with his skin, but then after a while his skin got harder and he got used to it. He didn't really have much free time to like play with his friends because he was working all the time. Nearly got very little money, so when he went out to play, he couldn't get a drink or anything. Yes, yeah, sorry. He's not going to be very good on his confidence because he's going to be all like he doesn't earn very much, so he's not going to think much of himself. Yeah, over here, Taylor. Um, I um I reckon education because they're they're pay they're working, so their little brother can have an education or something. I don't reckon it's very fair. What is the one reason why all of this happens? The reason at the centre, yes. Poverty. Poverty. Poverty is why all of this is, is happening. What if I went over to India and said, I'm going to stop people, going to stop all children from doing work like that? Uh, yeah, I think it'd be a bad idea because, like, that they wouldn't have any money and... That's what they depend on to live. Really. They may have to steal from the markets because they don't have any food or nothing and they'll be desperate. It's not really directly to do with the question, but you know when there's like a major disaster like there was when we had the tsunami? How come we can like raise money so quickly and then there's poverty that's been going on for ages and we don't really seem to make that much of an effort? And why does a natural disaster have to happen for us to do something about it? I yeah. think it's quite um, bad that we don't raise enough money to give to them because they won't be able to... Um, then if we give some, make, raise some money, then all, all the children might be able to go to school and get a good education. For me, one of the most shocking things in there was that you have to actually pay to go to school. What, what, what do you think about having to pay for school? Yeah. I don't really think that is fair, that like some children can go to school because they have the money, but some children can't, and I don't reckon that's fair because they can't go to school. Are they supposed to get education and work to get more money? They wouldn't be able to. OK, so. good. Yeah. We can buy, like, four packets of sweets for the amount of, like, money they spend for, like, a term. It's like, it's like, why do we have to, like, why do they have to pay that money and we can just go and, like, go to the shop and get, like, a tiny thing? for what they, like, earn in a year. Yeah. Well, well why is it? Why does Frank wants to make it clear that not only is having to pay for education unfair, it also contravenes the rights all children should have. He's taken two articles from the UN Convention on Children's Rights, which directly relate to Anil's life. 
Would somebody like to read that out? Um, yeah. The right to education, including free primary education. The right Frank wants the students to recognise that the rights they take for granted don't apply to many children who work. What I'd like to do is give you one of these each. For homework, um, he's asking uh, them to keep a diary a to record how a day in their lives compares to annuals. The first one says, what free time have you had and how did you spend it? How much time did you sleep is another one. How much time did you spend at school, including travel time? A week later, Frank begins the second lesson by asking what the students did with their time and how that compares to the lives of child workers. How did you spend your time uh, at, at the weekend? I spent most of my time like, out with my friends sleeping. OK, sleeping. How much sleep? How about ten hours? OK, cool. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't sleep much. I like going to bed early and waking up early. Uh, I mostly just spent around like riding my bike and playing games, really. Um, normally, I spend my free time playing football, going out with my friends. Can you cast your mind back to that video we watched last week? How much free time did the young man in India get? Can, can anybody re remember how much free time they had? Um, hardly any, because they had to work. They had to work. That was the big thing, wasn't it? And how do you think your life contrasts with theirs, compares with, with, with theirs? Yes? Our life's, like, really easy because we don't have to, like, work. We can just count on our, like, mum and dad to do stuff for us. So, like, they have to, like, do stuff for themselves to help other people, including them. Good. Excellent. Anybody made any money in the last week? Sometimes I go to the shops and buy some stuff, like milk or things we have run out. So... OK, good. So you get some money from that. I get £10 a week for doing, like, the washing up, like, twice a week and hoovering the stairs. Right. Well, I didn't really earn my money, but I made, I got £120 the other day cos I got it for my birthday and I also made a fiver for doing in-the-house stuff, yeah. How does that, again, compared to that boy in India, compared to, to how hard you had to work or what you had to do, how does that compare? What he did was, like, make bracelets, and what we do were, uh, like, basic things like wash or hoover. Um, when, when he worked, he got his money and he went straight towards his, his family to go to school, and he didn't get to spend any of it. Sure. Let, let me just ask you, if you had any money, how likely would you be to give it to your family? <coughs> would, you, would you be very likely, slightly likely? I would um, probably give it to my mum because she gave me a lot of money, so I'd sometimes um, give it to her back, but I'll probably keep it and go in the shop. OK. We're going to watch a video... This week, Frank uh, is showing a film about young, young campaigners in Delhi. In he wants the students to see what children in India are doing about child labour and inspire them to start their own campaign. There's an estimated 100 million children involved in child labour in India. In 2006, a new law banned children under 14 from working in shops and restaurants. But it's not always enforced. Children living in the Delhi slums are working together with local charities to campaign on children's rights. They know child labour's often an economic necessity, but want all children to go to school and they want to change attitudes locally. At this meeting, one of the group's members, Savita, is discussing the new child labour law with the younger children. I want to talk to you all about the new law on child labour. How many of you know about this law? The young campaigners come from some of the poorest areas of Delhi, where many children have to work. So, do you think this new law banning children from working is actually going to put an end to child labour? Who of you here have seen children working? Over a thousand young people are involved in this campaign. They have regular meetings and demonstrations and stage street plays about the issues that affect their lives. After the meeting, members of the group go back to their own neighbourhoods to talk about child labour. 
by knocking on people's doors and talking to parents. They hope to change attitudes. Have you seen children working around here? Yes, I've seen loads of kids working in restaurants and shops. People make kids work. They don't let them study. I've seen it a lot. I've seen parents who spend their money on alcohol, and they shouldn't. They should make sure their kids go to school, not make them work. I've seen them doing shoe polishing and all kinds of things. Most of them are only little, but they're definitely not going to school. We want to let people know more about the situation for these kids we're talking about. So we're doing a play later on. The children put on plays about child labour that everyone can watch for free. <laughs> they want the plays to educate people and make parents think about their own behaviour and the rights of their children. <laughs> What did you think of the play? Oh, it was really funny. So, should kids work? No. What comes first? Education? Yeah, education. If you see children working under 14, you can call this FIFA number to report the employees to the police. Ultimately, the young people here would like to see an end to child labour. But there are no state benefits in India, and millions of children and their families need this income to survive. We were told that what's really important now is to make sure children who do have to work are protected and their basic human rights upheld. I think what the government should do as well as banning child labour is bring in new schemes like vocational training so that children who are working can learn new skills. And for the children who do still have to work, there should be school available in the evening so they can study. At the moment, schools are empty in the evenings. They should start night school so that all children have the chance to get an education. There are so many children here who work. We're doing this because we want to make sure all children get everything they're entitled to. If children get their rights, they'll get all their needs. All their needs. Their food, their drink, living, studying, playing, everything. That's what we want. What, what are your initial thoughts? Anybody? I think it's really good that it's all children doing it because they're the ones who've like been through it and they're the ones who really understand. So they're the people who can explain it to adults and that the best. It's because the children were going around to the houses talking to the parents, not the parents talking to other parents. So do, do you think that was, that was more powerful? Yeah. Um, I can see why there's being laws to make, so, to make sure that children don't have to work, but... Otherwise, there's no money, so there needs to be something else which provides them with money, otherwise it's just, the situation's going to get worse. What do you think we could actually do about it now? Uh, we could try how they're living for, them, for ourselves for a day, see how hard it is. That's an interesting thought. I think we should make a leaflet, copy it and put it through people's houses. Make a website about it to like, advertise the fact that there are children in child labour. Brilliant. We've got some very good ideas in here. And Frank wants the class to use ICT to put some of its ideas into practice and spread awareness about child labour across the school. I'm, I made like a template of a website in like a different class. So I'm doing. I'm going to change it, and we're going to make it as like a site all about it, about child labour and things like that. So what's going to be on the website? It's going to be like pictures about like what they actually do and who, how old they are and things like that, and how you can help stop it. The main way to communicate across to people now is characters from 
different things, so I'm just using game characters to illustrate the fact that the child labour is happening all over the world. It's not, it's not fair. There's lots of luxuries that we have over here, which we just take for granted, and they'll 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 have to work like a year for it. Say we lose like a pen over here, we just go and ask, go to our parents and ask for some money. But over there, they'll have to like work a year before they can work enough money to get the pen. The biggest child labour population is in India. Children from the age of four hours start working, earning little pay. What sort of things would make it better for children who, who do have to work? If school was free. If school was free, would that make a big difference? Yeah, because then their parents wouldn't like be going bankrupt trying to pay for their school. I reckon what you could do is you could give them like lunch breaks or whatever so they can have time for free time in the middle of the day so they don't have to wait till the end of the day. Yeah, good. Though child labour is a subject that's far away from these students' lives, they've been inspired by what they've learned and want to start a campaign of their own. What we're going to try and do is put posters up around the school and in local areas, maybe post some through the doors and see if we can build awareness more than anything else. I think if there's something there in front of you, it'll, you'll think about it more and then you might take action on it or do something about it. Oh,